for a boat ride. Is that you over there, Dr. Ramon? Are you doing some more biology? I'd like to go over a really great question that I posed to the study group today, and a lot of the top kids had a little question and a little bit of difficulty on it. So I'll make you a deal. The first 20 seconds, I want everybody to listen. And all the slackers, take a walk because the rest of this is going to be overkill. And for the slackers, they don't like overkill. But for the guys that are going for the 30, I want you to stick around and listen to the whole tape. So come over. Okay, Dr. Bottle, I'm going for a 30. Now, the first thing I want you to do is we're going to look at the starting compound. Now, the thing that I want you to at least make sure you know for the DAT exam. Um, is one, this is what we call accumulated diene. Accumulated means that you have a carbon and then there's a multiple bond on either side of the carbon. And that middle carbon is gonna be an SP carbon. So we have an SP carbon right here. If you look at how I drew the orbitals, those orbitals are gonna be orthogonal to each other, meaning they're perpendicular. I put them in black and green. Because they're orthogonal to each other, that means that this end on the left and the end on the right are in different planes. And that's nicely illustrated here. As you can see, this is coming out of the board, this is going into the board, and these are in the same plane. So you want to make sure you at least understand that. The simplest accumulated diene is called alene, in which we have all H's um, on all those groups. Now, the question in the study group was this that I asked you if you have H3O plus and we treated it, this alene, what would you get? Now, for the guys that are going for the 30, what I want you to do, the Joe Montesanos out there, the Shimmy Goldsteins, the Ari Hoffs, the Nikki Dembers, the, the hard-hitting kids, what I want you to do is to think alkyne chemistry. Whenever we hydrated an alkyne under acidic conditions, we did a tautomeric shift, if you remembered. So it's the same thing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first add an H and an OH, and I'm gonna put an H over here, and I'm gonna put an OH here, okay? Now, when we did something like this, we would then undergo a tautomeric shift in which the H went to here, the double bar went to there, and as you can see, the resulting compound is a very stable ketone. So once again, the first thing when I added it, all I did was form an enol. And that was a non-event, and you all know an enol is not very stable, and it's gonna push forward, and it's gonna give you the very stable ketone. And that's the final answer. The final answer was a ketone. Wasn't such a hard question. Once you remembered to make the connection that the alene chemistry is often very similar to the alkyne chemistry. All right, I hope this gives you um, some good perspective on a question never really been asked. Uh, easily that destroyer worthy. I could have put it into next year's destroyer, but I thought I'd share it with you right now. All right, good day to you. Dr. Bye -bye. Romano, I like overkill. Would this get me the 30? Overkill's great. We had so much overkill last summer, and I can't tell you how many percent, maybe over 65% of the Harvard class are from our group, as well as Stony Brook of Columbia. All right, guys, bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Romano. Good day to you, sir. I was going to ask if you wanted to go boating, but I don't think you do. I'm going boating. Bye-bye.